Hello, welcome to this video. I'm going to talk a little bit about a modified bin packing problem that I have been working on. My name is Corey Messer. I'm a student here at Liberty University studying industrial and systems engineering. Um, this is a little brief overview. I've been working on this project for about a month now and we're finally to the final report. Now, so for a little description, let's talk about this problem. We're kind of given 100 boxes with the same or different size volumes and there's a created list of these boxes and what we need to do is group this list and create individual lists of the boxes for each pallet that needs to be shipped and stacked. Now these pallets are going to be put into a container and the ordering of the boxes needs to be first in last out into the container that way the um, when the container is shipped overseas and it's unpacked and the contents of the container are used to start a project the first items into the project or into the container are the last items used on the project so the very last pallet that is put into the container should be the very first pallet pulled out of the container and it should have all the contents that um, will be used right off the bat to start the project. Now each pallet um, can also be known as a bin, thinking about bin stacking, and it has a constraint. It can only carry a certain amount of items and a certain amount of weight per all the items, a certain amount of volume. And then each of these items, they have different volume or similar volumes and weights. Um, it's really, I have them using random data. Um, each item has this value of a priority, um, so when it goes into the shipping container, it comes out at a certain time when it's unpacked. Now, there are multiple pallets, therefore every item is on every pallet, and all the boxes will fit into the container. I did a little bit of some MATLAB work also um, to work on a swapping algorithm, which balances the volume between the pallets. Therefore, all the pallets will be stacked somewhat equally. Now, to the right is a cost function, just a little bit of mathematical modeling, talking about the sum of all the different volumes per the pallets, and so forth. Now, here's a little bit of some pseudocode, and also an example um, of just some pictures, talking about the overall having 100 boxes, you need to create individual packing lists for each pallet, and then those packing lists then can be stacked onto the pallets and shipped. Now before I get to the conclusions and lessons learned, I'll go ahead and show you a little bit with the Excel document and the 3D packing, then also um, if we have time with the MATLAB. Now here on the left you can see um, like just the 100 boxes or data entries, there's a key to them, there's also the height, width, and length, and then the overall volume, the weight, and then the unique priority. Now, priority one will be the lowest, so that'll be the first item into the shipping container, and then priority 100 or 101 will be the very last item that will be put on a pallet to be put into the shipping container, which will be the very first item or box used on the project. Now here in the center we just have some statistics about um, shipping uh, pallets and different sizes. For this example we're going to be using the GMA, GMA which is really just your standard North American pallets. So right off the bat we can go ahead and um, scroll over and see that I've already created areas for each of the packing lists to be for pallets 1, 2, 3, etc. Um, I'll go ahead and zoom out and show you uh, let y'all see how the sorting works. So we'll go ahead and sort it. And this is just a normal um, bin stacking or bin packing. It's just taking the first item out of the list. It's adding it to the bin or the pallet. And then it's continuing this and at the same time summing the volume. Once the volume hits the maximum capacity that I have it set to, it breaks and it starts to stack another pallet. Um, I just have uh, Excel VBA here that does it automatically, then cleans it up afterwards. So we went ahead and finished this VBA macro. And you can see that here on pallet one, we have a sum of the volume around 140,000 cubic inches. Now these are all the items that will be um, packed or grouped together to be on this pallet. Now, I found some other code 
by this guy named Emery and he created an Excel macro to go ahead and stack these pallets. We can go ahead and copy the height, width, and length of the data that I grouped together. And then we can run it through his 3D packing algorithm. Um, Emery Keechsey, I'll put his link uh, in the description. That way you guys can um, check out his video that he made. Pretty cool uh, little algorithm. It works off of three-dimensional um, plotting. And so we can go ahead and we'll run on X and Y because we don't want our boxes to be flipped over. That'd be full rotation. And then our pallets are 48 by 40. So we'll go ahead and run this. And then it'll create the three-dimensional plotting within the cube 48 by 40, however the height needs to be. And so the cool thing about his code, it outputs to a um, text file. And then he uses a emulator here that way we can run a script and it'll show what the palette should look like when we stack it. So this script just pulls the um, data from the text file which was outputted by the Excel file. So when we go ahead and execute this we can see over here what it will look like to stack all of my random size boxes that I group together on a pallet. And so the same thing can be done for pilot 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And this kind of gives you an idea of what it would look like to stack these uh, boxes on a pallet 40 by 48 inches. Now, given all of my data entries are all different random size boxes, different volumes and weights. I think we have a little bit of time left. I'm going to jump over to MATLAB and show you a quick uh, swapping algorithm that I created to balance the sizes between the pallets. So I've already ran it and um, here we can see that the program will look at the difference between pallet 1 and 2, the difference between pallet 3 and 4, the difference between pallet 4, etc. And it will determine which pallet's bigger. Is pallet 1 bigger or pallet 2 bigger? And here it sees that pallet 2 is bigger than pallet 1 and it finds the difference. So here we have a difference around 3.4% and I wrote the code so it finds a box on pallet 2 that is a little bit less than the weight of half the difference. So it needs to find a box a little under 3,000 cubic inches and the code looked through all of the, uh, the, the list in the bin or the pallet for pallet 2 and it found two boxes at index 25 and index 28 and because I want to keep um, same priority or similar like priority between the two pallets, I have it choose the smaller index, which will be the smaller priority when it swaps and gives it to pallet one. So here you can see the swap happening, and then we can look at the packing list for pallet two, and you can see right here it gave away this uh, item, and it gives it to pallet one right here. Now the difference went from 3.5% all the way down to 1.6%, so balancing out the volumes between those two pallets. Now, pallet 3 and 4, since I'm using random data, when it grouped those boxes together, it automatically um, grouped them so it's under 1% um, with just the random, the random data. Therefore, I wrote it so if it's under 1% to begin with, we don't need to run swapping. Now 5 and 6 has a difference around 6.3%. And granted that pallet 6 is not fully stacked because I don't have enough data points to fully stack pallet 6 since I'm only using 100 boxes. Now, it did find a pallet or a box that's half the size of the difference, around 5,000 cubic inches. Looks like it found 5 of those. And because pallet 5 is bigger than pallet 6, it's going to take the maximum data entry or the maximum priority, number 79, and give it to pallet 6. So after the swap, we can see here off of pallet 5, it gave this data entry, and it gave it to pallet 6 right here. So the difference went from 6% down to 3%. So that was another project I was working on, but it does show the swapping algorithm between the two things. Now, going back to some conclusions and so forth, something interesting that I found was that after conducting the research and simulation, a new question kind of formed. Currently, 
I'm grouping the 100 boxes at around 70% volume for each pallet. Now I'm doing that to stay under the height constraint that I have to put these pallets inside the shipping containers. So I have a new question that kind of has formed in this research. What options are available to increase that grouping volume but stay under the height constraint? And so I was thinking of maybe possibly a better stacking algorithm than also moving away from random boxes into homogeneous boxes or maybe two or three, maybe five different types of boxes, stacking those and seeing if I can decrease the difference between the sum of the volume of the boxes and the sum of the volume of the pallets. Now just some quick lessons I've learned. It really helps writing flexible, clean code um, and then also thinking about when you're pseudocoding um, what you want to do. Um, pseudocode it in different ways that way to choose the same result and then choosing the best um, pseudocode from those different options. So thanks for watching this video. Check out Emery's link in the description and watch his video. It's pretty good. And then I'm also, I have another video that talks more about the MATLAB and catch that and watch it too. But have a good day.